the importance of collective bargaining being recognised as a human right. He then looked at the international obligations that we have, reinforcing the recognition of collective bargaining, then looked at the case law, uh, both in New Zealand but internationally, and particularly the important case from the European Court of Human Rights that came out of Turkey that acknowledged that the freedom of a association of necessity includes the right to bargain collectively. So he set out making uh, the case for that to be recognised as an explicit human right. He then moved to why it's important by looking at the Hobbit law, um, the um, law that took away rights from uh, employment rights of standard employment rights from people in the film production industry to highlight the way as, as much as the way in which that law was made as to the effect of it and through that case study if you like the need to acknowledge and recognize um, the importance in a constitutional sense um, of good uh, parliamentary process when you're changing a law that in effect does and did take away people's rights. Uh, he then helpfully uh, suggested some changes that he thought might be helpful um, and they were uh, changes to uh, the rights, specific rights in the Bill of Rights, the right of freedom of association in New Zealand Bill of Rights uh, should be amended to expressly include the right to collectively bargaining and the right to strike in conformity with the law. He then suggested that there should be other wider works rights should um, be included, the right to work including the right to gain one's living by uh, work which has been freely chosen and accepted and the right to just and favourable conditions of work he also suggested, so that was specifically uh, directed at changes to the New Zealand Bill of Rights Act. He then suggested as a second fix, as he called it, in a constitutional sense, was changes to the legislative process. So changes to Crown Law consistency assessment process to make it more meaningful. Uh, expert advisers um, uh, to give more time for better uh, regulatory uh, impact statements uh, and also perhaps a more arm's length, more independent approach to, to the regulatory statements. Also that members in charge of the bill subject to section 7 reports to take responses um, to the Attorney General's concerns and particular responses could be expected to be explained fully why uh, the member considers the breach is justified, in other words Parliament should discuss this explicitly and also prior to the third reading should be subject to a final consistency test of the Bill of Rights, that's come up several times and finally also the power of the courts and express power to issue declarations of inconsistency with the rights contained in the New Zealand Bill of Rights Act so come through declaratory only and also for responsible ministers to table reports in the House of Representatives bringing the declaration and the government's response to the attention of the House. So many of the fixes um, that he was suggesting I think have also come up in other sessions and finally I, I think in answer to a question he was asked to prioritise if you like for the uh, constitutional panel and he emphasised the importance <coughs> of fulfilling international obligations that international obligations should be taken seriously um, and not paid lip service to and secondly there should be an improvement in the legislative process so that legislation like the Hobbit law was not passed through in a day without any um, necessity to even go to a select committee or have a proper uh, section 7 report done on it. So I think that summarises um, what that session was about. <laughs>